Okay, so um, here we are with uh, Igor Baranov. Is that a good uh, pronunciation? Yeah, that's, okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. So Igor's in, in a in a um, it, well, he's involved heavily with XDI, um, some pretty high up position, I believe, uh, and, and more of an architect or engineer position, if I understand. Um, and uh, we're here mostly to talk about, given the, uh, the scaling issues, or sorry, the gas fee issues today, um, sort of that the, we want to get a better look into the security guarantees and viability of XDAI as a solution and the whole, and how that relates to staking, or I should say the stake um, coin, if, it is, if it's a coin. Um, yeah, why don't you introduce yourself, Igor? Uh, yeah, hi guys, uh, I am Igor, I'm working on XDAI and some other projects which are beneficial for the ecosystem of side chains. For XDAI is a, um, one of the first uh, USD stable chains. Uh, it's fully compatible with uh, Ethereum and uh, following all the uh, patch sets uh, and um, uh, the same parameters as mainnet. The consensus of uh, WexDAI is, uh, uh, is based on uh, delegated proof of stake. And uh, this consensus is, uh, as far as I know, the only delegated proof of stake consensus, which is included into master branches of uh, two uh, core Ethereum clients in uh, Open Ethereum and uh, Nevermind. So also I'm working on Token Bridge, which is our interoperability solution used by XDAI, POA, um, and some other chains like Energy Web Foundation, Thundercore, Artis, and Luxor, and so forth. Uh, and also we have an uh, open source block explorer, which is used by most EVM side chains. Think about scale, not scale. Um, <laughs> scale is one which is not using. Cella, Matic, um, uh, Ethereum Classic, Rootstock, and uh, many others. Um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, basically working on Ethereum tooling uh, and scalability and the interoperability solutions. Okay. You guys built the Nifty wallet as well, right? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a fork of MetaMask. Uh, initially, we started to build it to uh, make uh, MetaMask uh, uh, like first-class citizen for uh, for side chains, right? Because uh, there are many chains which are not supported. Well, most of the side chains are not supported by by MetaMask. Um, and also, we added some uh, some features which we wanted to have in MetaMask, but they didn't accept it. Let's say if you want to add Y-curve uh, token, which is more than um, 11, um, uh, uh, which is more, more than 11 symbols, you can have some problems to MetaMask, right? But in Nifty World, there is no such a limitation. Um, also, let's say if you want to import uh, seed phrase with uh, 18 uh, words, it's fine, right? So like, uh, Nifty World will accept it, and MetaMask will only accept 12, and so forth. Also. You can in, in Nifty Wallet, uh, you can have a smart contract uh, as a as an account. So let's say you can add a Magnosis uh, uh, multi-sig wallet into Nifty Wallet, and you can see how the how a DAP will look uh, from the perspective of uh, of another uh, contract, right? Mm. Um, so that's uh, so if I, is that um, almost a solution for. If you want to chain transactions, like like you mentioned, the multi-sig, um, you always need to have the data you actually want to send, and then you need to sort of wrap that in the multi-sig transaction. Are you saying that Nifty Wallet helps with that? Well, somehow? with with the UI, definitely. So it's a, it depends on uh, how this uh, smart contracts are built. If it's uh, like a proxy smart contract, it uh, can be uh, not that easy. Um, but yeah, like you can. You can select an account uh, which, like, you want to interact with. Uh, um, this, if if this is a smart contract account, then you can you can see how UI is looking uh, uh, when this smart contract is connected as like uh, in Web three provider. Um, yeah, like if you want to see UI of an application uh, from the perspective of a, of a multi SQL, let's say you want to see balances on somewhere like on. Zapper, right? So like, um, you can do like this, uh, and also you can sign transactions in multi-sig from from uh, from another accounts in, in your Nifty wallet. Yeah, that's uh, okay. That's we should yeah. check into that scope. That might be really useful. Yeah, I, I just want to I just want to ask you like something else that I'm also very curious about. You guys basically, you you've maintained serious forks of Geth of Nethermind now as well, of 
you know, I mean, right. you built your own block explorer and nifty wallet. That's pretty, that's a lot of stuff. I'm really curious how you guys output that much. Um, well, we, we, we don't support GIF fork. We support uh, open Ethereum and then nevermind. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, the old parity. Yeah, uh, old parity. Yeah. And also token bridge and black, black explorer and fork of nifty wallet. For now it's a team of seven people and um, yeah, mostly on uh, each project we have one person. So that, uh, um, yeah, that's how it works. Okay, uh, but yeah. Well, that, that's impressive. I'm, I'm very yeah. impressed with how much stuff POA actually output. But, yeah. but it used to be a bigger team. So on, uh, on Black Scout, mm. we had, you know, at some time we had more than 20 people working on the, on, on the Explorer. Wow. But now it's, now okay. it's, uh, it's built and we don't have that, uh, that many people <laughs> anymore. Right. So that's, uh, that's, that's why we have less people. Okay. Well, let me, um, let me maybe steer us back into the, the scaling. Uh, well, I actually, maybe a, a question just right at the beginning. So uh, you mentioned that XDAI is delegated proof of stake. Did I, is that correct? Uh, consensus of XDAI chain is, uh, is based on delegated proof of stake consensus, which we built from scratch. It's called PostDAO, proof of stake DAO. So it's based on ideas of proof of stake and the, um, decentralized autonomous organizations, right? So the idea was, okay, is it possible to make a DAO, which is managed by uh, uh, stakes and uh, actors who are acting as uh, validators and delegators and put it in the center of the network and put them as a, um, gatekeepers of consensus. Uh, that was the idea that we initially started to build in November, 2018. Um, and it's, uh, it's live now on our next day and also on some other networks. Okay, cool. And for, for a long time, actually XDAI was proof of authority. Was it proof of authority for some time and now it's not? Or is there, what's the difference between? Yeah, so that's, uh, that was POA, but POA stands for a proof of kind of autonomy, right? Because it's, uh, uh, I know that it's a terrible uh, uh, thing like to to have uh, uh in one industry two acronyms with different meanings uh, but that is what it is right so actually the initial name was oracles network because validators acted as oracles for the network and after we received a, a like a threatening letter from oracles and corporation to rename or <laughs> go in, a, in court and uh yeah and uh <laughs> And I thought probably it's, it's, we should change the name. Uh, and at that time, I lived like next building to Oracle Incorporated Incorporation office. So I thought, okay. Okay, yeah, maybe I, I took this name because of this, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and um, it's, the consensus is we call POA DAO, right? It's uh, uh, the idea of a POA consensus is that it acts as a DAO, but DAO with uh, exclusive access. So like uh, only existing members of DAO can add new members and based on a mm -hmm. co-op model where one head is one vote, right? Um, so validators, so, so this type of network is bootstrapped with a like minimum amount of validators to reach uh, as a social consensus. So let's say two or mm -hmm. three, right, required to add a new validator. So we bootstrapped it with a uh, like minimum number of validators and after validators started to add new validators. And actually now this network is uh, completely autonomous because validators, they, yeah, we don't have any kind of communication channel with them. So they, <laughs> well, we have a forum, but there is no like a group between us and validators, right? So it's, uh, um, they operate the network mostly on their own. So we, and uh, hmm. yeah, XDAI initially was launched in the same setting where initial group of validators, it's a POA, MakerDAO, and um, Giveth uh, were the first validators. And after anyone from this group can propose a new validator, and after by majority of votes, this new validator is onboarded. So that's how this group uh, increased in size. Well, and at some time decreased, especially like during crypto winter time, right? Uh, because some validator didn't want to, to host their node because it was, uh, uh, mm. Expensive uh, you, well, and uh, no returns uh, in um, 
in staking tokens because it was not a staking consensus back in time. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. So it's proof of autonomy. And is that the same or different than proof of delegated proof yeah, of stake? Yeah, it's different. You know, delegated proof of stake okay. is uh, more inclusive and it, uh, it, it, it is resistant to type of attacks with uh, cease and desist orders, right? So in proof of autonomy, uh, all validators can get a letter from, I don't know, some government agency uh, to stop doing what they're doing. Mm. And for POA, it's, it's actually a, a big challenge because it's a country specific network. Um, all validators are US based notaries, right? So that's um, US based public notaries. Oh, right. So it's uh, okay. actually the only 100% okay. uh, uh, US based public network. So <laughs> it's quite fun, <laughs> right? Huh. Um, yeah, let's, let's say validators get cease and desist, desist order from, uh, from a government agency. Uh, yeah, just I'll put myself into this situation. If I get this type of mail, I will. You know, step, step down. Yes, yeah, I will, I will. Yeah, I will desist. You know, that's uh, like next minute, right? I'm not here. You know, just I'm just. I don't want to validate your consensus, right? If if I get the step. Yeah. Yeah, because because mm. uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a rational behavior, right? Uh, to um, to mm. follow um, this type of uh, guidelines, right? So when I when I step out from the consensus, the um, the like spot for like validator spot is uh, will be uh, free, right? My validator spot. Mm -hmm. So anyone uh, who is interested to be validator of this network can get staking tokens on a decentralized exchange, and uh, and apply as a validator on this network without any identity at stake, right? So they can they can do it, uh, and this is what is giving uh, inclusive access. And when you have inclusive access to consensus, you have to have some uh, uh, value that people put right. So that's why we need uh, staking, and that's why we need uh, to have uh, economical way of um, protecting the network from um, misbehaving of like new validators. So that yeah. uh, that's why it's important. And delegation is important. Uh, uh, in our scenario, because uh, first validators were kind of nominated right to this consensus because they started in POA setting, um, so for them, it's more likely that they are they will get they will get uh, public delegation from uh, from you know from delegators right. Let's say if you have two accounts zero x zero a b something right or like maker DAO or gnosis, it's more likely that you will delegate on the uh, on, on an account with a good name if mm. if you get the same reward uh, as a delegator right well even if it's slightly less you know you can think okay maybe I, I'll, I'll have some less risk here yeah and okay. tell me something the um, so in the delegated proof of stake system um, well you have validators who who can join anonymously and, and you know leave anonymously mm -hmm. me as somebody um, you know I'm uh, if we compare it to some other, um, although I, I know that that's not actually delegated proof of stake, it's some other slight change on the acronym, um, to something like uh, Tezos' model. Um, how does it compare to that? Is it also a situation where the actual validator puts real money at stake, which can be slashed, um, you know, and, and if he equivocates or he tries to, you know, support a double spend that he gets into trouble there, are there any downsides for the um, people who actually stake with that uh, delegator? With uh, with that validator, right? Like delegators of this validator, yeah. So um, okay, let's 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 think. Let's let's discuss this topic. It's important. Uh, in in our model, validators are not slashed, so they don't uh, they don't uh, lose their tokens in uh, in case of misbehaving. So let's say the, the most common misbehaving in uh, proof of stake systems is when people are just not paying for their nodes, right? They just forget to pay for billing expenses and their node, or they have uh, out of space, you know, on their uh, hard drives. So that's the uh, most common mis misbehaving. Uh, and uh, in this case, they will be removed from the consensus because they will not create blocks. Uh, and uh, this is kind of accountable event within the consensus. And this is accumulated per validator. 
like how many faults this validator is uh, is making during a, uh, like a round or staking epoch. And after it, um, this validator is kicked from the consensus and all funds of this validators are locked, right? And also all funds of delegators who delegated on these validators are locked also, right? And, and how are they when, kicked? Is that a consensus, like a sort of a manual consensus decision? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a part of the consensus engine. So it's, it's implemented on the consensus level and it's, it's automatically without any uh, like, uh, voting. When number of faults is, uh, uh, is um, uh, aggregated on this accumulator, the validator is kicked from the consensus. The same actually with like with, you know, in, in real life with you know, people and uh, their uh, mutations and DNA, right? So when, when we have enough mutations, we're kicked out from the from this world, right? Um, so like uh, validators who are kicked out from the consensus, they're not creating uh, blocks anymore. Uh, and the delegators cannot move their funds. In our setting, it's like for 90 days. And if you think about uh, in, in permanent losses, which people can get for 90 days of locked funds, it's quite a quite a big penalty, right? It's like, it can be like a lifetime in real life, right? What can happen on crypto in 90 days? <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin can go <laughs> to zero, right? So are you saying then that the, the funds are locked and then freed after 90 days? So Yeah, they're freed. Okay. Uh, but, but validators, is, uh, this validator, uh, we think that uh, likely this validator will not be uh, trusted by, by by delegators anymore, right? Because uh, um, they, right. It, 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 they, you know, it will have more less uh, uh, chances to get uh, delegated funds. Mm. Uh, and one more aspect uh, that is uh, determining uh, uh, the like set of validators uh, per staking epoch. Is a is an on-chain randomness which validators are producing every every block, right? Um, so validators with um, with uh, like less chances who are out of this group of 19 validators with like top chances, they can be voted in by the consensus. So like randomness can give a second chance to this type of validator, right? If I'm a validator, I got fold, I was uh, frozen for 90 miles, for 90 days. After I removed back, I want to be a validator again, but my spot is taken, and then there are delegated coins on other on other validators. It's still possible that that uh, the consensus will vote me in mm. uh, because uh, because of the randomness and the randomness voting in validators from the from this long tail. But it's okay. for okay. now it's all theoretical uh, because we don't have you know enough uh, validators who are like. Uh, to, to test it, right? Uh, I mean, to test it in uh, in real world conditions. Not in, uh, how many how many validators do you have at the moment for the XDAI chain? Yeah, for now there are twelve validators, and uh, public uh, public validation is is not open yet. So like uh, the this this will be open in September. So mm -hmm. the only reason is because we are waiting for the last audit of the um, of the bridge for staking token. Mm. And it's quite important, uh, uh, quite important for the security, uh, because this uh, uh, staking token is minted on, on XDAI for as a reward for validators, but also it's authorized as a minter on on, on, on mainnet for the same staking token. Uh, and if uh, let's say if someone can create an unlimited amount of the staking token on a side chain. So they can abuse the system on a large scale on mainnet. So that's uh, that's why we're waiting for the like second audit of the of this bridge uh, to get sh to, to be sure that it's not um, so we don't have any any bugs which we don't know about. And the bridge, um, what are the? I'm actually not even really sure what what makes up the bridge. Like, um, is it um, is it something like an oracle? Um, we well, you, you mentioned it's. It almost sounds like partially it's a pair of smart contracts. Yeah, that's right. So uh, the, the, there are multiple bridges, uh, and also it's a it's a part of the security model that, uh, like, if you don't want to use those bridges, you can you can run your own bridges. If you let's say you can run bridges with different uh, security models, it's totally fine, right? But there are there are several bridges supported by um, by the community and by us. Right, so one is uh, die to X die and X die to die. So this bridge is uh, 
uh, pegged to the XDAI consensus. And that's quite unique bridge uh, because usually consensuses don't accept external events, right? As a, for, for the reward. It's hard to imagine that someone will tell Bitcoin, okay, Bitcoin, please print this number of Bitcoins in the next block, right? So it's kind of, it's built in in the protocol and we know what the emission rate is you know, and so forth. Uh, and for, uh, for XDAI, it's based on a different paradigm. So in XDAI, the default reward is zero XDAI and only XDAI which can be produced is bridged die from the external network, which the network of XDAI doesn't know about, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, another bridge is uh, what we call arbitrary message bridge. So it's, a, it's infrastructure and uh, different applications can use one bridge for different uh, applications. And we have several uh, what we call extensions. Extension is like a plugin for the bridge, right? It's like additional application which you can plug in into the bridge and it will help you to bridge specific token types. Uh, we have a plugin for uh, what we call multi-token bridge. So this bridge can accept any ERC20 token on the Ethereum side and as a factory creates a, 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 a kind of the same token type on the XDAI side. So you don't need to create uh, token contracts for them. Okay, so like if we were gonna, um, let's say we wanted to build that bridge for our token uh, Fry, we, you mentioned that each bridge has different security considerations. Uh, right. Our different security models. So, I mean, that makes me think. Well, there's two questions there. One is, what happens when it fails, or or how how can it fail? Um, and then how? Like that's just a big question mark. How do you even start building such a thing? Yeah, that's uh, uh, there. Um, there, there, there. Are, with bridges, there are more possible attacks. And the ways how the bridge can like stop working. Uh, good thing that um, actually making it uh, uh, compromised in terms of uh, losing funds, not that many attacks, um, but with uh, like making it um, like drain budget of validators of the bridge, or just making it uh, um, not working. That's uh, that's like. That, that's more possible than with consensus, right? Consensus is uh, um, it's a different, very different application from the bridge, right? Okay. So with bridge, um, so what we like when we when when we kind of started to, to work on, on, on bridges, uh, there was no there there was no bridges at all, right? So like it's uh, um, kind of started to look into this you know, parity bridge and uh, peace relay and uh, some 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 other um, solutions, and we we took the model of a security model of parity bridge, and extended it uh, for the um, situation when uh, we know that uh, attacks can happen, right? And uh, our question was, okay, so what what are we going to do with the bridge if this if this bridge is uh, attacked, right? How to mitigate uh, results of this attack? With a consensus, usually when you, when people design consensus algorithms, it's like a commercial airplane. You don't think about this kind of you know what if it's right. Uh, yeah, you just you just make it pretty much not a you, not a consideration yeah, at just, all. Yeah, you're just making it flying ninety nine point nine nine nine, right? Mm. And with bridges, even though like if they're flying pretty well, you're thinking, okay, what are we going to do in case of um, you know, like security issues, right? In case of um, and is that because a bridge? I mean, it sounds like you, you're. It's it's that a bridge is host. It could be hosted on a server. I mean, it's just it's it's architecturally a centralized thing. Is is that right? No, no, no. it's not. A, it's not a centralized thing in our case, right? Uh, because uh, to relay a token between Ethereum to XDAI. For, for let's say for die to x die bridge, right? There are four validators and three signatures from four validators are required to relay this uh, message from chain to chain, right? Okay. And uh, I don't know where, I know where our validator is hosted, but I don't, I have no idea where other validators I are see. hosted. So that's uh, So it is, it is attackable 
in a similar way, a centralized system would be, although much more difficult. I guess what I'm, what I'm hearing is that it's not, um, well, it's like what you were what saying about the 99.99%. Yes, yeah, with, 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 uh, so sorry, just for clarity, I just want to sum up some stuff and just see if we have this part correct, right? So, um, <clears throat> so on the security stuff, there's obviously there is the staking token that that can get locked into a smart contract on Ethereum side, mm -hmm. that then becomes available in XDAI for the validator to run with. Um, on right. XDAI's side, on XDAI's side, there's obviously there's also a mechanism to, if I understand it correctly, the fees are still paid in in DAI. So um, you basically get die there, and it's mint, and it mints a block reward in stake on the side chain, which can then be transported back to the main chain um, uh, whenever the the validator un you know the delegates unstake their uh, their their token. So that's the one security thing, and that's basically Is that right the main. So far? Yeah, well, it's uh, and there, there there are many other possible scenarios for um, uh, for bridging tokens because mm -hmm. this. Arbitrary message bridge can bridge any token type, right? So yeah. there are other projects which are bridging their tokens, which we don't know about, right? They're just using this public infrastructure. So what I'm thinking, what I'm, what, what I want to say about attacks is that uh, there are so validators of the bridge they're reading data from uh, kind of remote uh, RPC endpoints, right? And mm -hmm. uh, they are more vulnerable to kind of eclipse attacks. In Eclipse mm -hmm. attack, you read the data from a remote node and you think that uh, this data is uh, correct data, but mm -hmm. actually it can be uh, presented as uh, malicious data, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say if all of our data are reading uh, state of uh, events um, uh, from Ethereum mainnet from Infura, and Infura, let's say, compromised, right? So an attacker can send to a breach a command, okay, please, uh, um, uh, transfer this amount of tokens to this account, right? And if all validators are seeing this event, they can relay this uh, uh, message to another chain and after for, for attacker, you know, they're just mm -hmm. making their way back and just specifying different validators. What so, is not so in a way, the bridge can be attacked if the validators can be attacked. That, that, is that a good summary? Right, and uh, and there is no way for uh, like uh, when we set up this bridge, there is no way for us to um, prevent validators from using some RPC endpoints. So if they want to use Infura, for example, right, there is no way to say, okay, guys, don't use it. Right, we can't say this, but there is no guarantees that they will use yeah. uh, they will use, let's say, local RPC endpoints. Right, um, but it's a it's a coordinational problem for now. I think that uh, we we running this uh, bridges and production since May 2018, um, and uh, it's working on a seven digits of USD worth of tokens locked um, since day zero, right from like from the launch, uh, and we didn't have any security incidents um, on all these bridges. So like, that's uh, that's kind of good thing right because yeah. when you think about security is also like a retrospective view like what happened with this solution was it mm. attractive to hackers to hack you know seven mm. digits of us dollars in smart contracts of a bridge yeah. where manipulation can be by i don't know ssl injection something like this right theoretically mm -hmm. um and um yeah so what we we didn't see this type of attacks Good thing that um, this model can um, can be scaled scaled up very easily, right? So if you if you think that three or four is not enough, I think it's quite secure. Three or four, mm -hmm. most funds in Ethereum and Bitcoin are you know, uh, using <laughs> two or three signatures, right? It's like uh, mm -hmm. the most multi six, uh, and uh, three or four is is secure. Maybe three or five would be better from perspective of uh, uh, availability. But yeah, if you think it's not enough, you can make you know, five or seven, right? Just, mm -hmm. I mean, you in this case, it's a community effort, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and also there are, so what, what I would just want to explain about uh, like losses here is um, that we have a mechanism in place where uh, uh, if validators are hacked, the breach contracts can determine maximum loss, right? So it's set up by uh, by daily limits, and uh, each contract uh, on each side has its own uh, daily limits. And let's say if daily limit is 10% uh, of mm. funds of specific token, 
and hacker hacked the system. So mm. the, the time that we have to resolve this issue for the rest of the funds is like 24 hours, right? From the time when we discovered this issue and the maximum loss is 10% of the funds. So that's, and when we think about this, like, yeah, that is 10% from, I don't know, die to x die, what is a uh, couple, it's a uh, 90K, right? Let's say if, if we have 10% of 90K of USD, is it kind of big losses, you know, for the, for the network to kind of tolerate this risk? Maybe it's uh, tolerable and uh, insurable via, you know, Nexus Mutual or some other uh, solutions. Um, but if we think about some other bridges with like millions of dollars locked, maybe this uh, daily limit should be lower, right? Yeah. And I, I think just to, so when, when let's say that the, the die to X die bridge fails, um, let's say all the validators um, are, are getting compromised information or they're somehow otherwise compromised, yeah. does that threaten the consensus of XDAI? So if we build a set of smart contracts on XDAI, um, governance, for example, if we build a DAO on XDAI, is that threatened or, or how, how, how does it look from the position of that DAO? Well, if you don't, if you don't use XDAI uh, for the, uh, so let's say if you don't use XDAI, then it's not, that's, uh, there is no insolvency, right? So if you, if you use, in this case, if you use XDAI on the XDAI chain and bridge is compromised and hacker uh, minted, let's say some new coins and we throw them, then the bridge balance will be insolvent, right? Um, and um, insolvent within, within this daily limits. Um, that's, uh, that's not compromising consensus, that's just making uh, token uh, less mm -hmm. valuable. Right, it would no uh, longer be pegged, it would lose the peg. I lose the peg. Okay. Uh, for, but it's not lose the peg because die will, will be die so it's uh, it's just making this uh, token uh, unbridgeable for uh, for some for some percentage of users on the xdai side for example right almost like a bank run it, people would try to exit with their xdai to get die back and, and the last people wouldn't be able to yeah yeah, yeah. that's right but okay you know, let, let's say if if the, if the daily limit is 10 percent you know uh, then uh, each day you can withdraw less and less, right? Because you have 10% of smaller, yeah. smaller amount. So that's, uh, that's making bank run uh, quite, uh, quite a long bank run, right? Yeah, um, and, and yeah. does, does XDAI have that daily limit? Yes, but for the now, average. It, yeah, that's, for now this daily limit is 100K. So this is a maximum damage that uh, uh, mm -hmm. attacker can make. And the amount of large die is 90K. So, uh, so attacker. Uh, it's a bit of a, a theoretical limit the at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> theoretically, I can take the bank. Uh, yeah. yeah. So okay. okay. Well, that that helps me a lot so, so, to understand, like, yeah, the security model, uh, the security mm -hmm. um, dynamics. Go ahead, Skonk. I just want to clarify something. The bridges you say work on, uh, they work on three or four signatures. Or well, how how does that work? Yes. So how do I how do I set up a bridge? If I want to set up a bridge for our token, for instance, do I um, what what's the general process? Yeah, well, it's, running? It, it, it's you can set it up, but it's you mean I mean it's 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 uh, it takes resources, and uh, you need for three or four signatures, you have to have four oracles, right? Four nodes. Uh, also, there is a second layer of permissions which you can set with different keys, you know, which will not be on the nodes. And this second set of permissions will define who validators are, right? So if your validator is compromised, you can have another key with another three or four signatures and you can say, okay, let's remove these validators, let's add new validators. Yeah. And you can have another layer of permissions which can define what, are our, what is our daily quota, right? And mm -hmm. if you set daily quota to zero, no one can exit basically, right? So the bridge is, is stopped. Um, so that's that's a way to stop the bridge. And you can set another layer for uh, of permissions uh, for upgradability. And uh, this uh, upgradability can, ha can have access to all funds of the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, basically you can do whatever they want. If you don't need upgradability, you can set this set of permissions to zero x zero, right? And you have non-custodial bridge Right, um, mm. 
if you have uh, uh, if you have like if you remove permissions for quotas, you have uh, or give it to, to a DAO with a, um, you can have more kind of decentralization from this group. Uh, also, it's all these all those groups of permissions they can set up differently on different sides of the bridge. Think about you know border control, right? You mm -hmm. have border control police of one country on one side and on, of another country on another side. If it's mm -hmm. you know two Koreas, they are very different, you know, in their mentality and <laughs> intentions mm -hmm. and so forth, right? So that's uh, um, yeah, that's. Um, that's, some, that's something that uh, uh, is possible to configure. Think about this mm -hmm. as eight different multi six Four yeah. on one side, right? For like who validators are. Second is who can change validators. Third, who can change limits. And fourth is who can get access to funds and upgrade the, the protocol. Mm -hmm. And the four sets of permissions of each side, on each side. Mm -hmm. and, so and Mm -hmm. And in this, the validators are almost like um, emissaries or or like staff at an embassy, because yeah, if I understand correctly, the validator on one side of the bridge is looking at the other chain and seeing, yeah, this X Y Z is is deposited. Is is do I do I have that right? Yeah, that's right. So that's that's possible to have uh, two different group of validators uh, for for, uh, for 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 each side. Yeah, that's that's also possible. Okay. Um, All right. So but it's possible, so, but, but it's not not typical. Then uh, it sounds like. Yeah, well, yeah. So like, if you ask me, like, um, do you think we should implement this uh, on next day for now? I don't think so, right? Because the it's a mm -hmm. uh, such a small kind of um, such a small. Um, Surface uh, surface for attacks, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it, it's just make, making it uh, too complex for this. Uh, so like just this just just to, just to clarify, you're saying that validators validate both ways for both sides. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. Yes, and okay. also yeah, and also permissions are set on both sides for the, the same group of validators. I see. Okay. Of and so on. But if if you ask me, okay, we want to put I don't know fifty million dollars in this bridge, like what you can improve from the current situation. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, let's do this, this, you know, let's, let's mm -hmm. have different groups that have more validators. Let's uh, force them to look into like um, uh, local RPC endpoints and not remote RPC endpoints, right? Because it's like mm -hmm. much harder to implement uh, um, this uh, man in the middle attack, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like if you ask me about this amount of like let's set limits, uh, quotas lower, um, let's remove upgradeability at all, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because for such uh, such amount, maybe we don't need it. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's totally possible to to increase uh, parameters of the network uh, of the of the bridge in terms of security, and we built it for the like for the future, right? Not just. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like looking back, our first bridge, our first transaction on POA bridge was like $1 million worth of tokens. One side was sent at mm -hmm. one side. It's actually somewhere on YouTube. Um, we live streamed it and it was, yeah, it was very uh, um, dangerous. <laughs> it's like to be the first, right? Uh, uh, what kind of what kind of economic value do you think would you would you go well above this? I'd be uncomfortable bridging that amount. Uh, I don't. Well, I don't. I don't. It would, depend, the, it would depend on the architecture of the bridge, right? Yeah. For for now, let's say if someone put like hundred million dollars into the bridge, I will be I will be comfortable if it's uh, if we set up all the permissions that we have uh, like in the. In the right way, right? We'll have not three or four, but maybe five or seven. Uh, we'll have, uh, uh, we'll monitor which RPCs are, are you, they're using. So it's possible to make in a, in a uh, kind of in decentralized way. So all, all oracles of all like this um, uh, validators, they're sending uh, syslog information from their log into a centralized server, but this server is only like accepting logs, right? And we can parse these logs and we can query. Um, uh, data which RPC endpoints they're using, and without like revealing any uh, open ports from validators, we can get data uh, and uh, make our own uh, like health check. I mean, us here it's community. It's not us as like 
you know, XIT, right? It can, it can be done by anyone. It's just the idea that someone isn't interested in like in, in, in DevOps things, right? And uh, putting putting stuff into into monitoring. So that's why I think that um, uh, it's us because we are interested. But let's say if someone else is interested in monitoring file data, that's also perfectly possible. Also, we have monitoring tools for essential parameters of, of each bridge. Um, so like uh, balances of our data, number, number of deposits, withdrawals, uh, overall health, number of transactions and so forth. So we, we have this uh, service deployed for all the bridges, have all the metrics uh, on monitoring and uh, uh, yeah, just- where can, we, where can we find a list of the bridges? Uh, so the best way is to uh, all uh, on docs.tokenbridge.net. So that's, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so it's documentation for the bridge, and also you can see all the bridges that we sub we're supporting. And also okay, there is cool. a- I'll put that link in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, yeah. we have uh, descriptions of all these roles and the uh, monitoring and you know, incentive models, uh, links to security audits and, uh, and so forth. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Okay, now my, well, my next, yeah, sorry, mm, continue, ahead. Levin. No. No. Uh, yeah. So my, my next question is just basically if, um, you know, the, the currently the major, I mean, the, well, one of the major issues with Ethereum is obviously the way that the gas prices go exponential once we go past the block that's, I think it's 97 or something percent full, you know, mm -hmm. and then some bad dynamics basically kick off. Um, <clears throat> and, and the two primary like long-term culprits so far seem to be uh, USD Tether um, and uh, Uniswap. So if, uh, if, if you had to like gun to your head move, you know, you, you had to move all of the USD um, tether activity over to a side chain um, and all of the Uniswap activity, how would you go about that? Because obviously that would mean the bridging of an awful lot of, of economic value, at least, um, yeah, how, how would that work and, and what, would, what would need to still get in place for that to be possible on this side? Uh, well, with USDT, it's quite easier. So you just need to send USDT to multi-token bridge and it will be bridged. So there is no need to, any, uh, to do any uh, like additional setting uh, to bridge mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, so uh, That multi-token bridge that's live now? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's live. Mm -hmm. So, so what, is, what is the, if I'm on the USDT team and I'm trying to make this move, what do I actually where do I actually go to do that? Or do I even need to do anything? Mm -hmm. Well, from there is no need to do anything from USDT team. So that's, uh, that's only required from, like, from users to bridge their tokens. Uh, mm -hmm. But I expect that uh, to build confidence in this USDT token bridge to a side chain, um, maybe there, there is a need for some endorsement from the USDT team. Just check mm -hmm. their Twitter okay. about the uh, OMG mm -hmm. network. They just... Uh, made this collaboration with OMG to scale payments on OMG. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a kind of endorsement that can build confidence uh, for users. Um, but from technical perspective, it's not that, um, yeah, it's not that important. So the bridge, the bridge, the bridge doesn't care much about uh, endorsements, right? So it's, um, uh, as a technology, that's only, it's only what, it's, it's only people who care about this. Uh, yeah, for USDT, it's quite easy. Yeah, I mean, it's just because it's because it's and it's easy if I understand because it's a token. There's already a uh, what was it called? The arbitrary token swap. What was that bridge? It's called arbitrary to, uh, arbitrary message bridge, and multi-token uh -huh. extension is uh, is working on top of this bridge. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a okay, okay. And so, if you wanted to then move a system that's more complex, like some kind of DeFi thing. Uh, like Maker and Dai. Well, that would, I don't know. That gets a bit weird with X Dai. Let me choose a less confusing example. Just um, Uniswap. How would you? Well, actually, uh, Uniswap I mean, I is you harder to move. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Uniswap is. I think it's harder to move because Uniswap is uh, is used by more tokens than than uh, uh, Maker Dai. Dai, right? So like, uh, I think orders of magnitude more tokens. And to to have a to have to have a adapt like Uniswap, you have you have to have liquidity on the network, right? 
it's quite it's quite hard i don't so think you, anyone yeah it, it, i mean i'm just thinking aloud but i guess you'd have to first of course redeploy the uniswap contracts then you'd have to basically ask users to the same types of users that are providing liquidity on ethereum and that you'd say hey could you swap your tokens over to the over this bridge and then provide liquidity on uniswap on this side chain is that about right yeah i think that uh <laughs> that's not going to work right because lps are doing this uh for fees mostly right or because they're uh like team members of uh of tokens which are uh, uh like launching on uniswap or providing liquidity on uniswap right so that's uh, that's a big problem how to um, how to engage with uh, LPs to move liquidity. So they what are uh, LPs? Uh, liquidity providers. Oh, oh right, of course. It was uh, just a set of users essentially. Yeah, like liquidity providers because well, if you have liquidity, it's uh, it's easier to uh, to have users. If you don't have liquidity, um, so there in uh, when we think about motivation, any motivation, right? You, we usually have two types of motivation, right? Yeah, internal motivation and external. Right? So with internal motivation, uh, for people to go on a, on a, uh, on like on another chain, that can be okay. If I can get something cheaper on another chain, or like under the same swap that I want to do, right? I can I can go there and, uh, and use it because I just I just want to save my money, right? And for external motivation, can be okay if you go to Uniswap fork on another chain, right? Uh, you can get some additional like governance tokens, for example, right? You can get some bonuses. Um, you can you can be a part of the like new ecosystem, right? Let's say new you can have new friends, you know, because it's a it's a side chain for you know for your favorite game. Uh, just I'm just thinking Fortnite can launch their own side chain, right? Based on the on the news that we saw with Apple and Google and they implemented the payment <laughs> solution. So that's uh, that's two different type of motivations for users uh, um, for to 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 feel it uh, um, like to make it feel uh, with internal motivation for users uh, uh, worth to go to side chains. We need to make it dramatically cheaper, right? Uh, and uh, with the uh, same uh, same results. So here. Users can trade, let's say, time for money, right? They can spend more time to bridging tokens and making swaps by saving some some uh, uh, some some money. And if we have enough liquidity, people in this loop will be re will be replaced by bots, right? So just you know, need to get some first adapters, after which will do this because they have motivation, get liquidity, and after this will be arbitrary. Uh, 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 Arbitrage by by bots, right? Because they will see opportunity, the same opportunity that people see. Robots will do the same, right? And this will create this type of loop, where you cannot uh, uh, kind of you cannot ignore this. And from social science, we know that uh, if there is a like, new phenomena, I don't know, uh, feminism, right, or just LGBT, or whatever, in society, you need like. Um, 4% of society, around 4% of society, like uh, supporting this movement to make it uh, uh, as something that we cannot ignore. So that's, uh, that's, that's what we need in side chains. When I think, okay, how much users do we need to have side chains, uh, uh, DeFi, uh, kind of uh, first, first class citizens on side chains, but also citizens that you cannot ignore in the crypto ecosystem. That sounds like 4% of the population which are using DeFi protocols okay. which is like which is like 50 people <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and so so one more one more question before we go uh at least on my side is um do you do you think does, does it feel to you with this uh recent gas price explosion does it feel to you like we're close to a, a beginning of a migration onto side chains or other scaling products well guess guess price uh, went down right so that's um and that's going up and going down all the time. Uh, uh, the the high gas gas prices, especially when it's like incredibly high, like you know, 300 way with Ethereum 420, right? That's uh, 
uh, it's, a, it's a good thing for us, right? Because it creates some like uh, external motivation for developers to look into other solutions with uh, like familiar tools. Um, but it's not the only thing why people are looking into side chains, right? Uh, just having free capacity on the network is also important. Not only like how much you pay for it, but also just to be sure that your transaction most likely will be included. And if it's not, you know that that the network is yeah, kind of scalable, right, uh, horizontally. So you can run your own side chain. You can uh, um, you can use XDAI tool, whatever, right? So like uh, we have another chain like XDAI, which is connected to XDAI and bridge between two side chains are extremely fast, right? They're working uh, almost as uh, native transactions on, on the side chain. So that's, um, that's something that is possible on, on on side chains are not possible in, um, in, in mainnet, right? So that's, uh, that's uh, another reason why people are interested in this. Um, yeah, I mean, guest price is important for the, uh, uh, for the interest from, from developers, but also the other things. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, well, that's all the questions I have. Skull, can anything else from your side? side. Uh, looks like Skulk has died. Oh, there he is. Uh-huh. Any any questions from your side, Skulk? Yeah, like uh, just one one last question. If somebody wanted, what is the okay? So so you walked us through like it, it seems quite complex to if you if you wanted to build your own bridge. Um, if somebody wanted to actually like start a side chain for their token, uh, what does that involve? Uh, if it's POA based consensus or a DPoS based consensus? Uh, the DPoS based consensus. Uh, okay, so you need a native token and a staking token. So after you, you need to deploy in, um, a network uh, and uh, connect, uh, connect this uh, native and staking token to Ethereum if you want to run in the same setting as, uh, as XDAI. You don't need to, right? And also, staking token can be native token and uh, vice versa. Um, actually, there are some uh, there are some companies which are helping projects to set up their own side chains based on the uh, let's say our technologies, uh, uh, ETHWorks or Protofire or Mixbytes. There are some like dev shops which can help projects set up their own side chain if they want to. Um, but yeah, like setting up your own side chain, it's um, it's uh, well, it's a, in some sense, it's expensive, right? Because it's just, it's more expensive than using someone else's uh, infrastructure basically for free, right? Uh, comparing to like running your own. But if I, um, did I misunderstand this part? If I, um, I, I thought part of the, the, maybe it's on the roadmap, but part of the idea with the staking token is so that people could use stake to actually then secure additional side chains yeah, outside yeah. of just XDAI. Yeah, that's right. So that's that's actually the, the it, it runs as a it runs as a multi-chain staking token. Um, so actually, there are two chains which are using the same staking tokens at, at the same time. Um, oh, yeah. So there so is what, another there is another token there is another chain except for XDAI. Yeah. So that uh, we have also staking consensus on Ethereum and uh, on mainnet. So the so there is a staking consensus on mainnet and staking consensus on uh, on XDAI. But staking consensus on Ethereum is uh, it's, uh, simpler and um, they, uh, it's built for um, uh, liquidity mining, right? So basically when people lock their staking tokens, uh, uh, they can they can accumulate reward. And when they when they when they unstake from the staking consensus, uh, uh, they can get some um, uh, APR, right, uh, from the consensus. And also there is like maximum APR that they can get. And the difference between APR that they get and the maximum APR is the reward of liquidity providers. Mm. Uh, and um, here can be some yeah, game theoretical um, position between LPs and users where um, Users can actually get uh, uh, generate reward for LPs uh, much more than LPs could have get if they stake in the same consensus. So this will create uh, 
um, inefficiency in the market and more people will go into um, uh, liquidity providing mm -hmm. of the staking token and more liquidity the staking token uh, will accumulate uh, it's uh, it's uh, less risky to get this token because you know if you can get token and after sell it with a large pool of liquidity it build confidence mm -hmm. into the into the market of this token mm -hmm. for this staking we built uh, as a like uh, complementary staking for the staking protocol and uh, it uses the same mm -hmm. uh, staking token same emission model same emission curve uh, same mm -hmm. supply so that uh, that's that's totally feasible to have uh, two or more mm -hmm. staking consensuses working for mm -hmm. the same staking token, which is okay, which is new, right? Because most staking tokens they designed to secure only one chain. Think about like mm -hmm. Cosmos or Polkadot, or, you know, ETH 2.0. There is one chain like Relay Chain, Beacon Chain, Hub, whatever, right? Where you have a staking token, uh, uh, staked. Uh, in uh, this uh, old garden environment of the uh, um, mm -hmm. small chain, uh, and after you have um, uh, other chains with uh, uh, related security, but not related staking tokens, right? Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's the difference between uh, our staking model. I'm not saying that it's better, right? It's just different. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are more risks in our model, um, but it also gives uh, flexibility. Yeah, like, okay, if we want to use stake, the same staking token on a network based on Polkadot, is it possible? Yeah, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. So that theoretically, mm -hmm. why not, right? Uh, so there are no limitations where this uh, uh, staking token can be, uh, can find its new home, right? <laughs> okay. Just in case. Uh, so that's, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much, Igor. That's everything from my side. Anything else from your side, Logan? No, I, th I think that's uh, that's great. We'll we'll cut the recording here and upload it to YouTube soon. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much for your time, Igor. Appreciate it as always. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Cool. Cheers, man.